Okay, so I typed in Lucy's bones because those are the, you know, the heart of the evolution theory. And here we have them. And they're fragmented. They were found over miles, like it was, they, were, they, were, they were literally blown apart, which makes one wonder, um, could these bones have been scattered about in a flood, <laughs> a huge flood, like all the other bones that people are digging up. So let's look here. We've got an image of what she might have looked like, which is not very flattering, but she's uh, still, you know, I, I would befriend her. Uh, here she is with a boyfriend. And uh, here are the bones that uh, are supposed to mean that we came from monkeys. That this is the in-betweeners. And uh, she was tiny, apparently. She wasn't very big. Uh, this I expect is a modern-sized person, and this is this is her. So we've got these bones and they've made this, these images of what they feel those bones represent. And we'll just go on down and see quite a bit about Lucy. And, uh, and these, these skulls are Neanderthals and cavemen and, you know, uh, prehistoric man. They're fascinating and they are definitely real and valid. I have no problem with that at all. Here's the proof. You know, here is the proof. Well, they found this little bone, and they say it fits in there. So it must mean that person's human. Well, I've bought many cars over my life and have been surprised to find that oftentimes I have parts that are exactly the same in my vehicle that are in somebody else's vehicle of a different make, but made by, you know, the same manufacturer. So it just goes to show, uh, as Trey Smith says in his work, that uh, it takes a designer to make these things work. So let's go down here a little bit further. Yeah, this is pretty interesting. These uh, creatures, uh, looks a lot like Bigfoot there. What we would think today uh, people are seeing is Bigfoot. wonder what's up with that. And I have no problem in believing that there would be a Bigfoot out there. I think it's a friendly name for something that might not be what we think it is. But I do believe it's there. I don't think these people are crazy. So, <coughs> yeah, they find these bones and assume that they're, you know, because uh, we all have eyes, but they, they don't, you know, does that mean that we're, we were all evolved from each other because we have eyes? You know, not taking into account the complexities of a dragonfly's eyes compared to a fruit fly's eyes compared to a human eye. <coughs> you know, you can you can make up whatever you want. That's fine. And most of the people that have been talking to me about stuff like this that are a agnostic or atheist uh, keep telling me that I ought to go back to my fairy tales and you know, my fantasy world in the Bible. And I look at this here and I wonder, these can't be any stranger than anything in a fairy tale. No, they look pretty, like who knew a dog looked like that underneath? <laughs> but they do, I, I have to cut my dogs down all the time. But they're digging up these bones all over the place and they're saying, you know, that the most annoying thing that I think I hear and it really infuriates me when I'm watching these uh, videos uh, pro-evolutionist vi videos is when they make a claim that Christians think that the, the, the earth was uh, made f six to four thousand years ago that it, that's when it came into existence and that's the that's not even close to what the Bible says and I'm going to show you what the Bible says in a little bit. But we're going to keep on looking at, at these images because I want to be fair. I, I want to, you know, look at the proof that they have and uh, take a look at it. I've also got some other images that I'm going to be putting in the film that you'll see in a little bit um, of what uh, their theories are. 
and uh, they're well thought out and and they're 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 very interesting so I'm gonna leave that I'm gonna download a um, there she is there's Lucy so we're gonna save this image of the bones and uh, yeah it's amazing uh, how it must have been a man that uh, that designed this because she has uh, quite a nice bosom for a monkey not all humans have that great bosoms either unless they have implants that's why it's such a big business but he gave her a pretty nice little pair of breasts there so here are some of the skulls I just want to be fair and go all the way down and uh, here's a prehistoric man here and uh, the bison and uh, wilde uh, what are those called uh, well that's got a horn it's some kind of a hairy rhinoceros and uh, here they are they're quite interesting these bones are fascinating and very valid very real I don't doubt for a moment that they dug these up so we're gonna go back I'm just gonna hold on for a second and I'll be right back okay so I typed in proof of evolution and I wanted the images so that we could we could view them and I'm going to be discussing some of these in a little while but um, these are uh, diagrams and ideas I'll be polite enough to say ideas and not rude like they do and tell me I'm they're crazy or fantasizing uh, here they are now this this one here makes sense <laughs> <coughs> pardon me so this is what was supposed to have happened over here we're supposed to have gone from a monkey to this to this to this to this to this and all these in-betweeners have are in are extinct we still have this guy and we still have this guy but these guys they didn't make it now that's pretty odd to me because if they're con continually getting better you would think they would have you know made it to human right made it right up to here if they were continually getting better in their theory so that's just an idea I have oh. <laughs> so you can see that most of their their um, the, the proof of evolution uh, comes from drawings and theories and bones that they find and put together and just a like a, a lot of assumptions and when you break down the word assumption, assume, uh, we know what happens. A S S U N M E. So here we have a skull with uh, a wound in it. But I just wanted to be fair and check out the things that would pop up. Uh, well, that's pretty gross. Um, regarding. Uh, my search on proof of evolution so this is what we've got here so I'm gonna go on to another thing I'll be right back I wanted to share this uh, view of skulls I think it's only fair that we check this out as well these are all the skulls that are, are, are you know a portion of the skulls uh, that and varieties that they have found uh, that they compare to human beings uh, cavemen, all kinds of different, uh, you know, just slightly different, but different. And we'll take a look here. Here they are again. Uh, I think this is the human skull right here. And these other ones are from primitive man. And we'll check this out here. Okay, Homo erectus, that's us, and uh, I don't know, Austriopithecus, and then we've got these other ones down here. Yep, I believe they did exist, there's no doubt in my mind, but they are not human, not in the sense that we're being led to believe. Here they are again, different shapes. Again, here's our human skull, and, you know, I have 
spoons and I have shovels and doesn't mean they're related it just means they look alike so here we have these and uh, I figured you might like to take a little peek at that and uh, I'm gonna do another quick search and I'll be right back okay I wanted to be completely fair so I've come to this page where it says what is Darwin's theory of evolution and I want to make sure that I have included everything that they have been telling the agnostics and the atheists, the evolutionists, the Satanists. Uh, of course, the Satanists are the ones who are controlling most of this information, so they already know where I'm going and why. So it's going to be fun. Anyways, these are, this is it. This is what they say happened. Uh, a, a monkey that, cr that walked on all fours to a monkey that walked on three, <laughs> to a monkey that walked on two. Look at the skull shapes. They don't get any larger. And then you have what they considered Neanderthal man. And then all of a sudden we've got this giant, you know, great big skull in comparison and we're uh, walking upright. So there's one, two, three, four, five bone structures and, and so forth that they feel that they have enough proof of to say that we evolved from a man onward up to, uh, pardon me, from a monkey onward up to a uh, homo sapien. So it says here, more than 150 years after Charles Darwin published his theory of revolution remains controversial. Some politicians and religious leaders denounce it and would, in, uh, would invoke a higher being as a designer to explain the complex world of living things, especially such specimens as humans, or specimens. See, that's Satan's little way of trying to dehumanize you, to make you feel like you're nothing but dirt, uh, calling f uh, babies in utero f uh, fetuses or uh, non-living non -living creatures, and uh, what he just said here, uh, s uh, specimens. We are not specimens. We are uh, souls with bodies. Anyways, I'll carry on. School boards debate whether the theory of evolution should be taught alongside other ideas such as intelligent design or create creationism. Mainstream scientists see no controversy. Evolution is well supported and by many examples of changes in various species leading to the diversity of life we see today. Wow. So just what is evolution and how does it work? So we're going to go down here. I, this is fairly brief. In the first edition of The Origins of Species in 1859, Charles Darwin speculated about how natural selection could cause land animals to turn into a whale. As a hypothetical example, Darwin used North American black bears, we still have black bears, which were known to catch insects by swimming in the water with their mouths open. Ooh. <laughs> okay. I see no difficulty in a race of bears being rendered by nat natural selection more aquatic. Well, geez, I wonder why pe polar bears didn't turn into whales. Why are they still polar bears? Polar bears live on water and ice all the time. I guess they didn't think about the polar bear. More aquatic in their structure and habits. With larger and larger mouths. Oh, yeah, okay. Polar bear mouth isn't big enough to eat what it needs to eat. It's got to have a larger mouth and turn into a fish. Well, a mammal fish. Till a creature was produced as monstrous as a whale, he speculated. Well, that's very interesting. The idea didn't go over well with the public. Darwin was so embarrassed with, uh, by the ridicule, ridicule he received that the swimming bear passage was removed from later editions of his book. Did you guys know that? Scientists know now that Darwin had the right idea, but the wrong animal. Oh dear. See, now, there's a, there, there's a thing right there. If all animals evolved from other animals, how can he have the wrong animals? See, you can't have it both ways. You can't say, well, these animals evolved and those ones didn't. Uh, so this is, this, is, this, is, this is nice. This is good. Uh, okay. 
Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection is one of the best substantiated theories in the history of science, supported by evidence from a wide variety of scientific disciplines, including paleontology, geology, genetics, and developmental biology. Okay, I want to go back up here and show you exactly this. One, two, three, four, five. That's what happened. That's evolution right there. So we'll go back down here. Okay. Natural selection can change a species in small ways, causing populations to change color or go over the course of several generations, or si color or size going over the course of a generation. This is called microevolution. Really? Microevolution. So they get gradual changes. So when a bird, no, I'm sorry, they started off as lizards. So a liz oh no, they started off as fish. Okay, so a fish loses it at some point. Its fins uh, aren't really fins, and they aren't really legs, uh, which would make it extremely vulnerable to the rest of you know the rest of uh, nature, and would more likely be killed because it was de would be defenseless in that in between stage until its fins became feet, and then when its feet fins became feet, you're telling me that. Uh, it went from water breathing to air breathing and its fins became feet and then it started walking on the earth and as it walked on the earth its front legs began m gradually morphing into wings now this animal during that in-between stage would not survive because it could neither fly nor defend itself uh, because its hands and or wings would be at, you know in an evolutionary state so i find that that I find that pretty fascinating that they could actually you know put all that in the same sentence mutations hmm the physical and behavioral changes that make natural selection possible happen at the level of dna and genes do they <laughs> such changes are called mutations Mutations can be caused, they, are, they can't say they are caused, they can be caused by a chemical or radio, radiation damage or errors in DNA replication. Well, the only time there's errors in DNA replication or there's chemicals or radiation is with modern man intervention or the intervention of super, superior intelligent beings in prehistoric times those those types of things could definitely cause things to mutate like a frog with three eyes most times mutations are either harmful or neutral but in rare instances a mutation might now you see they cannot say that it has proven because it has not proven the best word they can use is might prove beneficial to an organism organism it has been proven by experiments uh, uh, from the fruit fly on up to rats and, and, and human beings that when there's a mutation the usually the next generation uh, that mutation no longer exists um, the DNA sorts itself out and it becomes back goes back to its original shape it doesn't continue on to mutate that would be defying the 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 uh, programming of the original DNA and the original DNA is programmed to maintain itself and its integrity so this 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 is quite this is quite a jump here uh, yeah, okay and they're spread throughout the population really there'd be a lot of mutants running around if that's the case because I mean think about it we've got 7.5 billion people in there the only mutants that you mutations that you find come out of Plum Island or some other hideous laboratory where they're trying to turn animals into humans and uh, genetically modifying our foods and uh, performing uh, mixing up stuff that shouldn't be mixed up and causing horrible uh, viruses and bacteria because they uh, this is just crazy. 
but that's okay. I, I didn't want to call anyone crazy. Using evolution as their guide and knowing that how natural selection works, biologists knew that the transition of early whales from land to water occurred in a series of predictable steps. The evolution of the blowhole, for example, might, they cannot, this is, you have to look very carefully at the language, might have happened in the following way. Random mutations. Oh, but that doesn't account for the lung system. <laughs> Come on now. A, a, a lot of animals can breathe both air and water. It's a survival thing. It's their uniqueness. It doesn't make them a split of two different types of creatures. They are the, their own creature. Random, mus <laughs> random mu mutations result in at least one whale having its nostril placed farther back on its head. Oh, so its nostrils placed farther back. But if, if it was a whale, why did it have a nostril to begin with? Those animals with this adap adaptation would have been better suited to marine life. Oh, so the bear's nostril would have slid back to, to, to the center of its head. Oh, gosh. Now, of all the artifacts and fossils, this, this would have had to take place over a long period of time for that sort of a mutation to not kill the bear first and to actually turn into a whale. So you would think there'd be tons of artifacts and fossils and uh, bones uh, of these in-betweeners. But they're, they're none. They're absolutely none. <coughs> this adaptation would have better suited marine life. Since, see, it, it's, a, it's, it's an if and if ands, buts, and maybes, and mights and could haves, and may, uh, you know, but there's no for sures. Such animals would have been more successful and had more offspring. And their offspring would have actually been born normal because the DNA is programmed to fix itself. So if there was such a mutation in a bear, where its nostril, which it has, oh, it would have to lose this, uh, the, the, in, in, the integrity uh, of a dog's nose. If you, everyone's seen a dog's nose up close, that would have to somehow, uh, how could the bear forage for food while its nose was decaying and crumbling or doing whatever it would have to do to end up being a blowhole? How would the bear forage for food? The bear needs its nose to find food. A bear is almost blind. It's got teeny tiny eyes. A whale, on, on the other hand, has an eye as big as my whole head, my whole body. So here you have a bear with the tiny, tiny eyes. And I lived in the bush, and I know what a skin bear looks like. And I've seen bear eyes, and they are tiny. Bears are darn near blind. They can see better at night than they can during the day. They depend on their nose. So if this nose was being pushed farther back, the very next generation, if that bear happened to have cubs, would have fixed itself because that would have been the death of those bears. They could no longer forage for itself while they were waiting for this evolution of fins and, and, and come on, from fur to, to a slick whale. This is so sad. Other parts of early whales also changed. Front legs became flippers. Oh, wow. So what happened between the front legs and the flippers? Why don't we have any artifacts of those? And don't you think that that would make it very, very awkward? I mean, you think about it. You're trying to get around, and all of a sudden, you, 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 you wake up and your feet are flippers. But you're, you, you're not ready for the water yet because they're, they're not quite flippers and they're not quite legs yet because they haven't fully evolved. And so you're there crippled. Uh, you know, vulnerable to being eaten by every other animal because you can neither walk nor swim. So, it just, it just, you know, come on, people. Don't tell me to go to my fantasy fairyland when you're believing in stuff like this. The smoking gun. Even though scientists could predict that early whales should look, should look like they lack the fossil evidence to back what they should look like. They lack the, fo the fossil evidence to back their claim. Of course they do. It didn't happen. Creationists took this absence of proof that evolution didn't occur. They mocked the idea that there could have been such a thing as a walking whale. Of course, the nearest thing you're going to find as a walking whale is a dinosaur. 
and a dinosaur was a dragon that they renamed because of their scientific bullcrap. They want to be superior. They, they wipe out all the other countries in the world, including England and Wales and, and uh, China and all these other places in the world that use the dragon as their logo and as their, their, their um, uh, family shield and crescent, uh, uh, crest and all that. The smoking gun came in 1994 and paleontologists found fossil, fossilized remains of Ambulocus nantes, an animal whose name literally means swimming walking whale. Well, its four limbs had two fingers and small hooves on its hind feet were enormous, giving its size. Oh, the small feet on its hind its hind feet were small, giving its enormous size. Well, I'm not surprised if you did happen to find such a mutation that there aren't any more because that thing died because it couldn't survive. It couldn't either swim nor fit. What could it do? You know, you take the tail off of a, an airplane, it can't fly. You take the legs off of an air, uh, the, the, the landing gear off of an airplane, it can't land. You take the wings off an airplane and put arms up there, it's not going to fly. This isn't rocket science, people. Oh, when it swam, the ancient creature moved like an otter. Oh, it did, did it? It moved like an otter. Well, then why are there otters? Otters do just fine, and they've been otters since the beginning of time, just like whales have. Uh, <laughs> Jonah and the whale. The whales have been here forever, and so are all these other creatures. They were a separate creature. They were not evolved, and you're going to find out why the animals that are here today are here and why the ones that they're describing as abominations and mutations and all this are no longer here. So this is, I had to be fair. I had to come here and, you know, I want to reinforce that evolutionists declare that this is the evolution of mankind and these are the only examples of how it happened for a human being. From this to this to this to this to this. Now, I want you to remember that really, 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 really well. I'm now on the King James Version of the Bible, and it's Genesis. And the passage I'm going to read is when God decides he wants to create man. Let's see here. And God said, let us, U.S., plural. And God said, let us make man in our, plural, image, and after our, plural, likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because it's important for us to understand that when God was doing all of this, Lucifer was still his sidekick, like his best, his best buddy. He was... Everything, you know, God makes all these things and they're all subservient to him. They're not intellectually his equal. So he made an angel that was his equal in every way except unable to breathe life into anything or to speak a word and create what he speaks. He cannot create. So Lucifer was with him when all this was going on as were uh, all the other hosts of uh, angels and and uh, uh, what would later become fallen angels and so you have to understand there's more than one God being spoken of in the Bible and he refers to that right here when he's referring to that us make man in our image and after our likeness that is why he had to specify thou shalt have no gods before me 
Now he didn't say one God, he said gods, plural. And there shall be no idolatry. There sh you shall, you know, like American Idol or, you know, adoring somebody uh, and ignoring your creator. And he didn't want that. And, uh, you know, grave images and statues and stuff like that that distract people from what's real because those are things that were made by us and they are not real. They, they have no life and therefore should not be worshipped. And so he, he meant, mentioned gods because there are other gods in the universe, but he is the big daddy. He created all gods, all entities, all aliens, all planets. Uh, this is a master math mathematician that is an eccentric energy that we cannot possibly fathom. And he made us in his image and likeness, and the image and likeness that he made all things. So the likeness of God's people does not necessarily mean his facial features because we are in his image you know five years uh, f five fingers five toes uh, we all, all, na all nations we all have the same body parts but a likeness is how they are inside your spiritual self if you are evil then you are not of God's likeness so he made us all good and he loved us dearly and the problem was with this Lucifer fellow was that all angels are subservient to humans we are his children also we are the sons and daughters of God and angels are subservient they cannot uh, order us about but we can ask them they have to they, they, they can uh, they can't intervene they can't there's things they can't do but they're uh, angels are there for 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 uh, spiritual guidance and to bring messages back and forth from God uh, to to whomever they end up being around so those are spirits and we are all spirits before we enter a body and when we enter a body we become a soul and that soul is supposed to be in the likeness of our creator and that's gentle and good and loving and and nurturing and and, and you know uh, none of this evil stuff but what ended up, ended up happening is Lucifer wanted no part of that he felt he was God's equal and just because he couldn't create didn't mean he couldn't control and he rebelled he turned against God and came here to earth and he was a fallen angel because he could not be up there he can go back and forth and you know talk with his father because uh, you know that's uh, that's what it is it is what it is uh, but he can't remain there he has to go back down here and into the bowels of earth with all his legions of demons which were formerly angels but you know they, they went with the they went they went, they backed Lucifer because Lucifer had promises he knew that we were down here and he hated us because now God had made us and put us above him who was his, everything but God was but couldn't create so his ego couldn't deal with it so now he's been down on this earth for the past you know uh, ten th th thousands and thousands of years since I don't know since the since the, there was life put on this earth and that would have been millions and millions and millions if not billions of years in the beginning is a long time ago and they they've been on this earth and this is uh, part of the duality of gods being represented in the Bible and people getting those gods mixed up with the real the only creating creator God which abhors any form of sacrifice or or evil or mean thing so uh, he abhors it so much that he, he, he would be willing to destroy everything he created and start fresh so I wanted to make sure that people understood that God referred to, to himself as a plural and that there are more than one gods in the Bible and that is why he warned us ahead of time it's like our parents telling us not to trust strangers because even though they might seem nice they really want to take us and rapists or do something horrible to us 
and he's telling us don't have any gods before you or idols before you because they don't have anything good in mind for you so he's actually doing what a father should do with those warnings they're not a mean or hateful warning and he asks us for our respect and that's what any father would expect from their children is respect and remorse if they've done something wrong like these are not outlandish requests so I'm going to stop that right here and I'll be right back with uh, the other part of uh, the missing Genesis 6 and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die but with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark, to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female, of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind. Two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive, and take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. So everything that was still of good DNA was put in that Genesis ark. Genesis 7. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female, of fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. And Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in, and his sons and his wife, 
and his sons rise with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood, of clean beasts, and of beasts that are not clean, and of fowls, and of everything that creepeth upon the earth. There went in two and two unto Noah into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, the same day, were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. In the selfsame day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark, they and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and every fowl after his kind, every bird of every sort. And they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. And the waters prevailed, and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters, and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered, and all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl, and of cattle, and of beast, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in the dry land, died. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle, and the creeping things, and the fowl of the heaven. And they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth an hundred and fifty days. Genesis 8. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged. The fountains also of the deep, and the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters returned from off the earth continually, and after the end of the hundred and fifty days the waters were abated. The ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. And it came to pass, at the end of forty days, that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made, and he sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in unto him into the ark. And he stayed yet other seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came in to him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. And he stayed yet other seven days, and sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more. And it came to pass, in the six hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. 
and in the second month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dried. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife, and thy sons, and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, and his sons and his wife, and his sons' wives with him, every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth, after their kinds, went forth out of the ark. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night, shall not cease. Genesis 9. And God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth. And the fear of you, and the dread of you, shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth, and upon all the fishes of the sea, into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. But flesh, with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. And you, be ye fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth, and multiply therein. And God spake unto Noah, and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you, and with your seed after you. And with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you, for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant, which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah. And of them was the whole earth overspread. And Noah began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine, and was drunken. And he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father. 
and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine, and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood three hundred and fifty years. And all the days of Noah were nine hundred and fifty years. And he died. I felt it was important to let the narrator tell that portion of the Bible for you because I'm really, really tired of evolutionists and atheists and all kinds of people that have never even, ha, ha, couldn't have read the book, uh, telling us that we think that the earth popped into existence four or five or six thousand years ago. That's not what the Bible says at all. It contradicts that entire statement and makes the people that say it look very foolish. God created the earth in the beginning. What part of that don't people get? In the beginning. The, a new generation came up after the flood. That happened four to six thousand years ago. And that is who we are descended from because that was the only clean DNA left in, of mankind was as you heard in the story of Noah and it's actually history it's not a story and that's the kind of fairy tale that uh, I, I've been reading all my life and I now know it is not a fairy, fairy tale and I don't blame people all the time for saying stuff like that because of the crap we were taught with and how, how, how to uh, distrust uh, anything that adults teach us that are credible by giving us incredible things like Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and uh, the Tooth Fairy and uh, stuff like that and then knowing we'll find out as we get older that those things aren't true and it puts doubt on everything and that's part of Satan's little work so here we're gonna find out about giants now, you heard in, the, in that uh, Genesis 1 that there were giants upon the earth at that time so we're just gonna go over this here. I'm not going to read it. Uh, well, I'll let the narrator read it actually because uh, he's far better at it than I am. If I don't know if there is a narrator here. No, I don't see one. So I guess we'll just have to look at it this way. There were giants in the earth in those days. You can see giants, giants, giants. Uh, sons of Anak, um, the way they figure out, because the only DNA that is specified as pure uh, it was Noah, Noah's wife, and their three sons. The three wives um, were not included in that. So, th yes, this is conjecture, and this is speculation, but it would make sense that their DNA was not pristine, and that after the flood, um, there were... This, this showed up in, in, in uh, births and created the Nephilim and brought them back. Uh, although the uh, Nephilim are also spirits and they could come back and start doing what they did before. I know that they're trying to say that the Nephilim are back now and that's, that could be. You know, it could be very, very, very likely that they're back right now. Uh, but anyways, there is 11, um, just with the word giant in it, just, just to give you an example. Uh, I'm not going to read all the scriptures. You're more than welcome to look this up yourself. Uh, there's a King James Version of the Bible and all other versions of the Bible online uh, in one co a cozy little, little spot where you can do comparisons and, and read the, uh, the passages for yourself. And the border came down to the end of the mountain lieth before the valley of the son of Himanon. 
and a which is in the valley of the giants on the north and descended into the valley of Hinnom and the side of Jezebel on the south side of the descendants to Urogel. So, um, you know, giants, right? So, you know, I just wondered what the heck. Um, those are some of the things that people used to call the Bible a fairy tale book. Dragons and and giants and cyclopses and uh, another way of putting down Greek mythology. They call it mythology. Well, what if it wasn't mythology? What if that's why the flood happened? And, you know, it's not just a what if. It's something you need to think about because it is what happened. And I'm going to prove it. It's kind of important. You remember the Jack and the Beanstalk fairy tales and stuff like that? Well, they kind of tossed that sort of thing in with, you know, with David and Goliath. So we have to include David and Goliath here. And uh, this is the, these are the passages that tell us about that. And Ishabab, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight, he being girdled with a sword that though to have slain David. Okay, I'm not a great nar narrator. These four were born to the giant in Gath and fell by the hand of David, David and by the hand of his servants. Uh, these were born to the giant of Gath and they fell to the hand of David and the hand of the servants. Um, the, I'm not going to bring up the whole story. You already know the story uh, that he used a sling and you know, shot it, shot, shot the, um, uh, I'm going to just go over here for a second, and uh, killed the G Goliath, uh, which was the, one, of the, one of the remaining giants on our earth at that time, uh, and right through, the, right through the head, right, just below his, like perfect, like right in the bridge of the nose there, and uh, killed him. And um, he was a little guy like us. So this is the kind of tactics that we use to... Uh, defeat these horrible monsters. Uh, I guess we were kind of like mosquitoes to them. Uh, like mosquitoes are to us, we were to the giants. Uh, but it must have been absolutely horrific to live in a place where you could be picked up like King Kong and walked around with like you were a rag doll and eaten alive, chewed up in a mouth uh, without even cooking you. <laughs> It's just, these are the things that were going on. So I wanted to just give a little uh, peek at this. And Goliath. I just want to show you, in case somebody doesn't know the story, I'm sure that Google Images will have tons of pictures. And there we are. And people were led to believe this was a Santa Claus story, that these things were not true. And it was just mythology. But I beg to differ. These things were not mytholo mythological. These things were what were going, what was going on in the world, and why there, uh, the huge animals were were there, and why the pyramids were built. And I mean, it it takes nothing for a, a thirty-five or thirty-six foot, a whole bunch of those giants to stack up a a, a, um, a pyramid, it, it, and to bring and to bring the stones in. Uh, that makes a lot more sense than uh, all these slaves trying to do it on rolling logs, and I mean the laws of gra the laws of gravity defy them their ability to lift the stones up as they went along. So uh, you know uh, it, it just doesn't make any sense. But having giants on the earth uh, makes Easter Island and all these huge doorways and huge drawbridges that I mean are way too big for an ordinary human being or any any uh, automobile that we have these days, 30, 40, 50 feet high drawbridges and doorways and big, big wide doorways on castles and stuff, and these huge castles and huge structures, perfectly made, with you know, 
so precisely made it's like they could just crumble the rocks off with with their fingers and and and, and put it in place uh, but no we we we'd, we'd rather think that it was a bunch of uh people our size working in a desert uh with sticks and stones yeah that makes a lot more sense so here we are and this is ultimately what Goliath uh, David did he brought the king uh, Goliath's head uh on a platter and this is this must have been you know this is probably exactly what it looked like this thing raging at you and just friggin huge and you've got someone probably about the size of my grandson and uh he whacks him in the head with a, a stone and just perfect wham he he's he's yeah he's down he's he's done so this is what i'm really really upset about with the evolutionists is we remember that little chart we chart uh that we looked at earlier that explains the evolution of a human being from monkey to man uh, you know the one i'm talking about where there's five of them and here we are oh well they've got us at a computer now so they've added it so here we go this is this is it this is it right here and you know we'll get lazier and we're back down to a computer this is somebody's little idea of, of of fun but this is this is pretty much what we've been told but they never acknowledge the giants and that really really bothers me and you see all this sediment when things are churned up and moved around they're going to lie they're going to settle back in the or with all that's mixed in with it they're going to settle back in the way that it does when you make a sand uh, you know sand it's going to settle back with the heavier parts at the bottom and getting lighter as it goes up so <coughs> or more denser or it's going to distribute just the way it did there so we're going to get back from here and uh get rid of this here bear with me <coughs> we've got that evolution chart so we've got no oh, that's not it here it is that one right there so yeah i just want to know where you know their missing link you say the missing link is this thing here right here this thing right here is the missing link right that's what you're claiming lucy those bones that's what you're claiming is your proof that humans evolved from a monkey this is this is the way this is your story right this is what you want everyone to believe okay okay let's do this let's do this the nephilim sons of god those are the children of the of the sons of god which are called the nephilim n e p h i l i m they are being dug up and found all over all over the world they're finding them in canada and texas in all over the united states japan china brazil and here they are and here's us over here. You see this little guy down here, six feet tall. You know, has evolution ever, ever, ever had these these bones, which there are plenty of, and skulls, which have been hidden away in the Mastonian Institute and hidden away and kept out of the public eye and never and ma made any deal of because it conflicts with their theory that has all of you duped and selling your soul. <laughs> And it's going to be, a, you know, I'm doing my very best to explain to you why what they're saying doesn't make any sense. Why aren't these bones? If you can see from a human bone right up to the biggest giant, they are still shaped. Or their bodies are still far more like a human being. In fact, they're almost identical to a human skeleton than Lucy. So they're digging these up all over the place, and they're digging them up currently. I'm going to actually bring you to uh, uh, current sites. These are things that are seen from the air. You can't see them on the ground. And the only one who could have done something like that would have been someone extremely tall or somebody that was able to fly. So fallen angels, Nephilim, and UFOs how they relate to us in the times of our faith. Well, 
all the, the Nephilims, the UFOs, and the fallen angels are of Lucifer. Everything else is of God. It's, it's you know, very simple. This is what they were massive, massive. So making these columns and stuff like that would have been nothing for these guys. Look at this man next to this, this skeleton here. Look at that man. Let's just zoom down here. Look at the skulls here. Where are these on your evolutionary scale? Where are these on your evolutionary scale? Do you see the brain mass in that? Do you know the intelligence that this being had? And here we have, look at the guy. He can crawl inside this, the skull of this guy and curl up. And this one here. My God, look at the size of these things. Why aren't these things in the evolutionary lineup? Because they don't want you to know the truth. They don't want anybody to know that, they're, what you, that you've been fed a, a line of crap. There is a God, a supreme almighty being that is in, intrinsic energy. Without that intrinsic energy, there would be no electricity. There would be no vibrations. There would be nothing. It would be a void. It's so much bigger than ourselves that you cannot, you know, you really have to take a couple of deep breaths and go outside and start looking around at the uniqueness of everything. I noticed in one of the charts, I'm going to be bringing this up a little bit later, in one of the charts, it says the plant life came first. Well, plant life came first. If a plant came first, it would die because there's no beast or other insects to pollinate it or to spread it around. It would just die because it wouldn't pollinate. You have to have the bee and the flies and the insects along with the plants for the plant and the worms in the ground and everything else and, and electricity that puts nitrogen back in the soil. You need those combinations to create and uh, for life to sustain itself because everything in, in every single thing in life depends on another thing. And minus that one thing, that thing will die. For example, human beings without water will die. We all need air. Without it, we will die. We all need something else to survive. And their bacteria that they're talking about, that formed at the very beginning of time, bacteria needs a food source. It just doesn't appear out of thin air. It needs a food source. So... <laughs> I really, really get annoyed. And here's a, a look at this. This, that's crazy. It must have been somebody that was ha, whose hand was X-rayed that was born with fingers. So that bloodline is still creeping around, and it's in the uh, in the bloodline that's in the Illuminati and the Zionists. They are the ones who are of Lucifer and and, and the Nephilim. And they are not our friends. In fact, they are bent on destroying everything. The devil means destroy everything viable in life. God means good orderly direction. I don't know. I'd like to... I think good orderly direction sounds a little bit better. I don't want to be destroyed or have watched my family or friends destroy. I have to kill people to get ahead. I mean, if that's the way you have to get ahead, I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather not have life at all. Because... I, I, get, I don't like to hurt anybody, and I don't like seeing other people hurt. I will only hurt if I see other people being hurt, then, or other creatures being hurt. Then I, then I turn into, a, a, I defend others. And um, so here we are. Why aren't these bones in your lineup? These are not only just a, an occasional skull. These are fully intact. Look at the size of the skull. Fully intact skeletons with fully beautiful sets of teeth and I don't mean just one set of teeth in the mouth I mean two sets of teeth in their mouths and bones and just but no 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 you do not you don't even include that in your lineup it's like oh we, we, we'll just pretend that those giant bones don't exist and yet the good Lord says what is in the dark will be brought to the light and he continuously I'm going to show you something he continuously continuously see there's your caveman that's your Neanderthal that's when they were playing around with all the DNA because these are supreme beings these these Nephilims those brains aren't 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 uh, candy floss those brains have were the ones who gave 
us knowledge. They are angels have the knowledge, and they give us knowledge on how to use fire and makeup and uh, how to how to work metals and all these things. It's all written in the Bible. Which which of these angels informed mankind of those of those secrets? And they knew about doing DNA long before uh, we did, which was not that long ago. I believe it was in the late 70s or late 80s that they actually found DNA. And so these, these things are so far more advanced. And if they would be, and anyone in the universe would be capable of manipulating DNA and creating abominations, it would have been them. And that's what they were doing. They were trying to destroy the seed of God because Lucifer did not want to serve us. He wants us to serve him. He wants to be like God. So he has to, because Lucifer cannot create, he has to send his demons into things and people and get them to create bombs and aircraft carriers and you know weapons of mass destruction uh, the people who are doing those works are not doing them because they're good people they're demons possessed and they're bent on destruction and they are working for Lucifer even if they don't think they are they are so you see how much these aliens, these demons and aliens and these Nephilim giants are all demons. They are all intergalactical. They are not from the universe. They are intergalactical. Anything that's solid is from intergalactical. Uh, spirits don't need rocket ships. Okay? And they don't need rocket ships. So let's just see what they, uh, 2013, we're going to put here, uh, giant bones revealed, un un unearthed. Yeah, let's see what it says. I've never done this search before. Oh, here we go. So this is 2013. This is a, a video. Okay, we'll just do a little uh, horn nephilims. These are all found in 2013 because this is the end times. I never liked that, that word, end times, but I do believe that the Lord is on his way. And this is the end of time. So he said what, would be, what was hidden in the dark would be brought to the light. And he's definitely been doing that here. These ones were found in Wisconsin. This is uh, January uh, 20th of 2013. So we'll just take a little boo and see what's going on. And understand that your missing link has got nothing to do with mankind or evolution. So, a giant mystery. 18 strange giant skeletons found in Wisconsin. Sons of God, men of renown. So let's see where they are. <laughs> I hope they've got pictures. Okay, now these are old articles from way back, Nine, 1897. Three recently discovered mounds in town had been opened. It was found skeleton of a man of gigantical, gigantic size. The bones measured from head to foot of over nine feet and were in fair state of preservation. The skull was as large as the half Half, half, uh, large as a half bushel measure, uh, some finely tempered rods and copper and other relics were lying near the bones. The mound from which these relics were taken is 10 feet high and 30 feet long. Wow, you see a lot of these mounds that we think are hills, there's actually, they're finding now people are, you know, getting up their backhoes because they buy the property or they want to renovate or whatever or uh, populize it or something and they're unearthing without even realizing that they were going to they are unearthing and have been unearthing all this time these giant bones now here we are you see this here now your Lucy's starting to look pretty stupid don't you think don't you think here's 36 feet tall look at this human remains unearthed and documented in historical records along with historical accounts of Goliath who had three brothers as big as he Og king of Basham whose bed was 13 
13.5 feet long and Maximus Thrax and Caesar of Rome uh, a Caesar of Rome so here here we go with uh, oh, I guess this, this is a mummy a mummified giant uh, so where are these on your evolutionary chart but the Bible oh my goodness the Bible actually it, uh, it tells us about them and promises that the dark will come to the light and here we are so I'm going to try to look here and get this over with to get to get on with the rest of this I'll just take a look at this here I don't want to look um, well let's see here images 2013 giant bones unearthed Well, this is 2013 so you know when we're going on a ride drive down to the country there along the highway and we see these rolling hills who would ever have thunk <laughs> who would ever have thought that those were the burial mounds of giants but they're turning out to be just that and these are not on your evolutionary scale at all so these are the bones okay let's see what they've done here Bring them up here. Oh, oh, wow! Look at this. Look at this. And they found this. Look at these things. They dug this up in Wisconsin. Okay, this is in Wisconsin. So, again, I ask you, where do these fit in to your evolutionary scale? Because they fit in perfectly, historically, with the Bible. And back in those days before they invented the war the word 18 in 1841 of dying creatures like these were called the great lizards they were dragons that's what dragon means the great fearful lizard and that's what they were called but if the church or the people in that want to control mankind uh, the Luciferians they didn't want us to know these things because that would put valid the validity into the Bible stories so if they left the, the wording for that into the Bible so they could make it seem fanciful and fairy tale like and it's absolutely not so here they're uncovering this guy's got to be huge look at the look at the brow on that thing oh my lord look at this look at the size this is people I'm telling you, you better shape up because these things are real. Look at the size of these bones. These things are real and they are unearthing these things and unfortunately this blows your whole theory and backs up the Bible all the way. And look at the jaw bones. Look at the size of the car. The car is here, his jaw bone. Look at her, her hands holding it. Look at, look at that look at the teeth on that okay and these things are shaped and they are you know they stand up on their two legs they are far more related to us than any these are made in the image and likeness of God and these are far more like us than Lucy God bless the little thing that you know I, she scattered bones over two miles well, they got scattered when the flood came because they were light and they just floated off into different spaces. And then somebody came along later on and found them and tried to put them all back together. But it makes sense that all the things that you're finding in the earth that you think are, you know, unexplainable, are quite explainable. And they are ab abominations of the Nephilim and the reason that Jesus Christ had to end up coming again after in the, the first testament though he prophesied 44 times before and during this time or the time just after this his coming because uh it wasn't very long before jesus pardon me god uh, realized that we we're going to need a savior because we're just heading right back down the road again and lucifer was winning you know he's he's really a dirty rotten thing he'll trick you and fool you and uh we always say he because all spirits are non-sexual as far as in in spirit form uh, they're infinite so we just say he because 
for lack of a better thing to say, I'm not going to say he, she, or anything like that, or be disrespectful to anybody. He is just a figure of speech, a way of describing uh, this alpha entity of intrinsic energy we call God. So these are his works, and they describe him fully in, throughout the Bible, and now, as promised, they are being dug up today.